Hi there, Gary Loden here for GenVFX. Back to our one-to-ones. Been trying to get around to this for a while. Been distracted by a few tutorials. Uh, but with today we're going to talk about the multi-resolution tool, which most people use with the sculpting brushes. Which is fine, and um, we will be needing that. But I'm not a sculptor, at least not to any level which I think is worthwhile actually putting out there. Uh, not for another at least 500 years when I've actually got my skills right. Um, but we're going to talk very, very quickly today about the multi-resolution tool. And yes, we are now using the 2.9 tool release of Blender because it's no longer a candidate. It's a full working license. But enough of that. Let's get on with this. So I'm going to start here with the default cube. Let me just zoom in on this beautiful, lovely six-sided thing. And we're in object mode. And I'm going to go here and the add it modify. I'm going to add the multi-resolution object. Now at the moment, all you can just see is nothing on there because nothing's been subdivided at all. We've got the level viewport zero, sculpt zero, render zero. There's nothing going on. But what I'm going to do now, obviously, because this is on there, is I'm going to go and I'm going to use the base thing that everybody does, which is go subdivide, 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 subdivide. So I've got six subdivision levels there. So if I'm in sculpt mode, I can paint away and make stuff happen on that surface. Now, that's great. If you're in sculpt mode, you can then sculpt, increase and lower the levels up and down. But of course, I'm not in sculpt mode, I'm in object mode. So that isn't going to change anything. That's the nice thing about this. You change the level of viewport in the object mode, and then you can lower it down so things can be quicker. So you're not using all the high resolution stuff all the time. But if you go back into sculpt mode, obviously, it's not the level of viewport that changes. It's, in fact, the sculpt level, because that is what you will be painting on. At different points so you can do stuff to it and the render one which for some reason actually is there which I still don't quite understand because you're either going to want to render it with all of it on so it's all lovely and beautiful or not at all so I think that's a bit pointless but then I'm just I'm just that's just me obviously what I'm briefly going to talk about here as we go on is the things that are in here so sculpt base mesh well this is a very very simple thing if I have got in here an object which if we go back let's just basically pop this sculpt back to zero so i've got at my base level i've got six six faces so i've got eight vertices and a bunch oh, i can't be bothered to even think about that how many is it it's, uh, 12 edges i think one two three four yeah times it by three yes i'm guessing that's 12 edges um because it's for that i'm drifting but sometimes when you've got all your stuff up here and you're doing your sculpting and you think right that's fine I've got all this here um, and now I want to go back down here and I want to do a base level change well yeah very simply what you can do is you can go right down and again pressing the wrong button you can go right the way down to the sculpt at the bottom and I could say right well let me just pull these bits up here yeah let's do that yeah and, uh, uh, but you can't really see what's happening until you go all the way back up and basically it doesn't really look like anything's happened at all well what you can do instead is you can use a sculpt base mesh and what that allows you to do and i'm going to just basically change this on change it to a press g to make it the grab tool and i'm going to press f to make it a bit bigger that i can then pull around in theory just about there you go there's one there i can pull around the base all right there you go the base shape vertices and they become visible when you basically get close to them where are you come here there we go and i can pull the base shape around without um kind of affecting what i'm doing with the other one so there's the reason why we can only just see a little bit of data is because obviously i've only got a simple cube if that was already a subdivided cube they would become visible and you would be able to manipulate those lower down without messing anything you've got up here. It's just, as I say, a way of sculpting the base layer, which is great. Optimal display, yeah, just leave it on. Yeah, it's just nice. Don't worry about it. I don't think any machine these days that anyone's working on is gonna need something that basically forces it to speed up or slow down, forces it to slow down. So what we're gonna talk about now actually is the subdivision simple and linear. Well, subdivision you've just seen, it just takes the object and subdivides it and by doing the standard subdivision, what that does is it says, right, I'm going to smooth the hell out of this thing. So if you start with an object which has got, you know, as I say, like six polygons, it's going to go, oh, smooth that down, smooth that down, smooth that down. And you end up with that beautiful base sphere. So if I just delete all of this and um, <clears throat> in fact, let's let's uh, let's go back to object mode. Let's take this bad boy and let's delete that. 
and let's add a new bad boy a new bad boy a cube again and I'm going to subdivide this and I'm actually going to use the multi-resolution uh, tool to do this I'm going to very quickly go subdivide and subdivide go to sculpt mode you'll see those points there there you go and let's just do one more subdivision simple subdivision there you go so it's all nice and sharp because that's what simple and linear both do they kind of they just do straightforward subdivides based on the shape that's actually there kind of so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into object mode and I'm going to apply this so it's just the object with those edges on and let's go back and let's now apply that subdivision surface again and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of sculpting so let's just let's let's subdivide this with a simple just one and let's go to our sculpt mode and let's pull up some of these points a bit let's inflate these and let's do that to these okay now what we're going to do is I'm going to click on linear subdivision and you'll notice that it subdivides it and it keeps all of your lines sharp nice and sharpy sharp sharp because linear just goes I'm not going to try and interpolate between the points I'm just going to keep those as nice hard edges so it's actually a nice way of if I press it one more time of keeping your original shape in every possible essence without any sort of subdivision at all uh, which is uh, cool if we do those with simple Lotus is actually trying to interpolate as best as it can so you can see that actually is smoothing off particular in fact you can see it particularly not so much on that crease there but you can see it more on this top here very much so where it actually tries to do a semi subdivision so it subdivides it but it does a level of interpolation so it's almost like doing edge flow if you see what I mean and that is the closest thing to edge flow that you can get natively inside of blender so that's actually really really useful now very quickly to show you what the next thing is on here I'm gonna to go to here and I'm gonna start I'm just muck about with it a bit just inflate it and screw it around and I'm gonna add another layer of subdivision and I'm gonna do it with the actual subdivision brush let's just smooth that bit out stick it a crease stick it a crease and let's uh, subdivide it one more time and then I'm going to just take this crease tool and make it a little bit smaller and push it in there so you can really really see that I'm putting in lots and lots of strokes into the details so it kind of has this really sort of like slightly punched and crushed kind of feel in some places and bloated in others I'm really going for the what I'm going for here is lots and lots and lots and lots of polygons that's what I want and now I'm going to go to object mode and I'm going to apply that for some reason that's gone like that let's take that back let's go to the viewport stick it back up to six and apply that there you go so apply the top layer there you go now sometimes when you build something like this in blender or any package really you look and you go oh do you know what I really wish I had a lower resolution version of this and well here's the thing this is when multi-res also comes into its own because it's got this thing here called unsubdivide and it's not a tool that you use whilst you're using multi-res it's a tool that you use after you've used multi-res so I've got this all baked I've got nothing done here I've, got, I've actually done no subdivision because I've done all that already but I want to get it back to a lower resh lower resh a lower res mesh so I'm going to click unsubdivide and I'm going to click it again and I'm going to click it one more time and I'm going to click it one more time why have I not and then what we have now is a lower resolution version it basically gets rid of every other then every other and then every other and if you've got an object which is made up of quads it's a really great way of cleanly bringing it down not only that also it can be used quite usefully you can duplicate your mesh delete the history and then you can use the unsubdivide to give you a model which you can then animate and then you can bake normal maps and displacement maps and ambient occlusion maps off of your high res cage using this as your base object to put it onto it's so useful um, it's really really useful but if I can just go back in histoire as they say 
in France to where we have this here. I've also got here delete higher. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this sculpt down. Let's just take it into sculpt mode. Let's just push this back up again. <laughs> uh, I'm going to now take this down. So this is at this level. So roughly the same as where we were with the unsubdivide on the object, which had no sort of built in multi res history. And I'm going to say, right, I'm done with that. I'm going to delete higher. And what that does, you'll notice, if I just go back quickly again in history, you'll see that the render there is set to six. The sculpt is set to three. The viewport is set to six. Okay, let's get back into the sculpt. And you'll see that's now dropped down to three, which is the visible sculpt layer. As soon as I hit to delete higher, that render six changes to three. And that literally is now the highest level mesh we've got, which is very, very useful. Now, just to crack on to the next level, I'm not going to bother with generate in advanced. And the very good reason for that is generate. The point of generate is to create a .btx file, which is a blender texture file. In essence, it's not really a texture, but I suppose that's where the name came from. Or it could be blender transform tool, maybe. TX transformation. I think maybe it's that. I'm going to say that. Forget the thing about the texture. Load of rubbish. So basically what it does is you can create something which has got sculpted and so on. And you can basically save an external file, a .btx file, which you then essentially it's connected to your model. So it's an external information which is used for your displacement. It kind of takes it out of Blender and puts it on the side. It then, when you do it, it creates a little button called Pack External, which goes where it says Save External. And when the moment you do that, it sucks that file essentially back in and puts you back where you were. I haven't found a use for it. I really can't see a reason why I'd want to take the deformation and store it somewhere on my computer where I could potentially lose it because, hey, I'm a human being, and then not be able to get my deformation back. So I'm happy not using that at all. And the advanced stuff, don't change it. Just don't change it. Um, it's all about making sure the quality is better, how to keep your UV corners, and keeping all your boundaries smooth, and then using creases and custom normals in order to basically keep some of your shape while you're actually blowing things around. All the settings in there, quite frankly, should just stay as they are. So don't muck with them. It's as simple as that. But what you can muck with is this reshape reshape is brill so let's just zoom out ever so slightly here and i'm going to do a little bit more let's just do a bit more subdivision a bit more subdivision and i'm going to say do you know what that is a shape which i'm happy with no let's not i'm just going to add a little bit more of this to it and let's do some bubbly inflation and then let's get some clay strips because clay strips are ace and i'm going to say even though this is absolutely rubbish and horrible uh, um, I am happy with that shape, really happy with that shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to object mode. I'm going to pick that object. And I'm going to go shift D like this. I'm going to press escape. I'm then going to press uh, that to push that over there. And I'm going to apply the multi-res on that. So I've actually got now an object full of loads and loads and loads and loads of vertices, which is great. But I'm going to be working on this. And I'm going to say, right, okay, well, let me just say that's that's okay. But let me just, and I'm probably going to make this look prettier than the piece over here, but bear that in mind. Um, I'm going to make the brush bigger. I'm going to smooth, 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 smooth. Yeah, no, I'm going to smooth all of this as well. Just smooth all of this down. Get rid of all this nasty stuff. I don't like the nasty stuff. I want all the nasty stuff gone. But then I have all of a sudden, I realize I've completely screwed my edges and say I haven't got any history for some reason, just out of interest. And I can't. And then I go, right, actually, no, I'm gonna have I'm gonna make this let's make this big slash in here like this. Yeah, yeah. No, I hate it all. I hate it all. I want this shape back. And this is great because this shape's topology is exactly the same as this shape's topology. Exactly the same as this shape's topology. So what I've got to do is go back into object mode so I can pick that one and then pick this one. So what we're basically picking, this is what I want shifting onto this. So it's like re it's like retargeting polygons. And then I go reshape. And that takes everything on this and pushes it back into here. And that 
is brilliant. So it's like having a living backup inside of your scene for your actual multi-res. I definitely recommend using this, uh, having like a store inside of your scene that you can push all that back with. It's just lovely. So that's really, really useful. What isn't useful is actually having these not smooth. Let's make that smooth. Ooh, oh, that's weird. Oh, that's so weird. Ooh, let's, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do to show you the next thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just delete these. Let's delete those and let's delete that. Good, right, so let's go back here and add in the default cube. And I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before. I'm gonna lower the, I'm lower? I'm gonna increase the polygon count. So let's go here and go multi-resolution and go back into sculpt mode so I can actually see the things that are happening and going on because the wiper is on. And I'm gonna go simple, simple, simple. Simple. No, let's 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 uh, let's go back one layer and let's force that to delete the higher layers. There you go. So that's fine. And I'm going to make that my base object by coming back into object mode and going apply. So that actually is a good edit mode. It's got. That's so odd, isn't it? When it does that, it sort of looks like it's. I just. I know what it is again. I've done it again. I've done it again. Viewports not set up. Yes. The viewport points have to be the same. So I can then, when I get to this back in object mode, and I go, right, I'm going to apply this. There you go. There you go. The application of a, when you apply it has to have the viewing level up. Otherwise, it just gives you the base mesh, which is useless and uh, no point to me. Right, let's carry on. So here we are. Here's our nice box with its lots of lovely points on. And we're going to add the multi-resolution service, I'm just always about to add a subdivide there, the multi-res, and I'm going to muck about with it. So let's let's uh, do a subdivide, a subdivide, and a subdivide. So we've got a load of points. And let's just very quickly go to sculpt mode and pick the, the clay strips. And I'm gonna put the mirroring on and I'm gonna bring the brush bigger and I'm gonna do some work here like this. So really sort of big, sort of raw, all over the place. And it's just like throwing clay at it. Let's just smooth that a bit. And let's smooth that a bit. And let's smooth this a bit. And but then let's actually get these clay strips and let's add some stuff here just to make it look a bit more like it's sort of animalistic, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a sculptor, I've said it before. But so there we are. Here's our stuff object. But if we go back, obviously in our sculpt, our base object is still zero. Well, actually, I want this shape here to be applied to this pretty much in that point. So I want the points I've got there to be roughly where they are here. Now, here's the thing. I click on here in shape, I click, apply base. I'm going to apply base. And what that means is when I go down to my lower sculpt layers, I have moved that information of those points to the right places. So I've now got a base mesh, which is closer in shape and design to my final sculpted mesh, which is lovely. Because it means you can then use this to be nicely rigged. And then you can have this when you render, which is lovely, really nice. It means you've actually got something which you've built lower down from this. And that's pretty much it. That's multi-res in a tea, in a bucket of tea. Uh, anyway, that's me, Gary, here for JamVFX, doing another little one-by-one -one modifier tutorial thingy. And uh, thanks very much for watching this at the end. I'm glad you've enjoyed it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I do tend to Twitter on. I've kind of left them in this time, some of, the, some of the waffly bits, just because I like to rush through these things. And, you know, I think you deserve to get me raw every now and again. Saves me time, I can promise you that. But uh, yeah, thanks as I say for, for, for listening. Um, I hope you're subscribing. If you're not, please feel free to subscribe. It really helps me, it helps the channel to grow when I get more and more subscriptions. And the more I grow, the more of these I can do. That's the thing, and I'm so happy to do them. So please, 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 please subscribe uh, if, you, if you haven't already. And uh, thank you for watching this at the end. Please get in contact and uh, let me know what you think. Cheers very much, guys. Bye.